So, uh, good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen. I'm uh, very happy uh, to do progress again as the last <laughs> speaker. On MMM4, we were actually two people that have been to all the uh, Mangrove conferences and all the Mangrove workshops. A week later, Joey were absent from the MMM4 workshop, <laughs> so now I'm the only one. So I think that's why you put me last again. Now, I mean, I thought that uh, it was going to be the only time that I had, so I was putting out all the magic tricks from the hat, and I thought I was going to come here with a, uh, with a, a really purely scientific talk. <laughs> but I find it not done to close a triennial uh, five-day conference with a 100% scientific talk with the significances and the methodologies and the statistical uh, relationships. So it's going to be something special again. Well, then, just how much fun can you make of a, out of a heuristic? <laughs> it's not easy. Uh, but I couldn't have dreamt of a better introduction than the one we just saw from Sri Lanka, because it's exactly what I'm going to talk about. So first of all, I want to thank uh, all my uh, co-authors co um, who are with me. Some of them don't even know what's going to happen now, but thank you. <laughs> so if we look at change and uh, uncertainty, because one of the things is that in this world we are always trying to keep what's there. And we never try to manage for a potential change. And that's, I, I think, is a problem. Change, we have short-term change, we have long-term change, but there's a lot of uh, uncertainty about that term. When are things going to change, really? We may have models, like in, in climate change, we have an idea, but we don't know exactly when. And also, why things change is sometimes unknown, uh, also. As I said, very often we try to manage um, what is there now, but we don't know if that's going to stay, because conditions are going to change, and maybe we have to prepare the system, and I'm talking about social, ecological systems, we have to prepare them for a future change. I also think we are looking way too hard for unidirectional relationships, whereas, like was just presented, the adaptive cycle, but I will also present then it is uh, cyclical and it is cyclic. If you look at climate change, I just mentioned it, what scenario is going to happen, we, we don't know, we can just uh, imagine and we uh, prepare. And when we look at change coming from anthropogenic uh, pressure, then that can be of um, uh, economic uh, origin, social origin, so there is a lot of uh, things that we don't really know, there's a lot of uncertainty. And long-term stability of uh, large-scale systems on these planets are uh, actually depending on that long-term cycles of change. So the adaptive cycle is actually a cycle that fits in on two axes, an axis of connectedness and an axis of potential. And like uh, our colleague already uh, introduced, it has different phases. You have the release phase over there, you have alpha reorganization, you have exploitation R and conservation, uh, which is the uh, case. And if I can uh, illustrate it with um, uh, an example, and I'm always using the same example because it's very easy to grasp. I'm always using forest fires, although you don't really have a lot of them in, in mangroves. But the release phase, which is typically in hours to days, it can be characterized by a canopy on fire, by trees that are dying, productivity that is decreasing, but also from the social side, you can uh, imagine that public faith in fire management is going to be uh, seriously affected. Maybe some uh, NGOs will be formed that are dealing with disaster uh, management. That all fits in this release phase. And if you look at the organization or renewal phase, and forestry wise seedlings were established, socialized, and new policy, uh, policies for forest management will be uh, established. And the exploitation and growth phase, which now in decades, reorganization was in months to years, exploitation and growth is in decades. On the forestry side, environmental resources will be incorporated, uh, you will have a high moisture, low biomass um, relationship, which will reduce uh, fire hazards. And from the social side, the policies that have been uh, proposed in the renewal phase will become regularized. And then finally, in this conservation phase, which can be very long, uh, actually, 
you have all the solid and quite rigid interactions. But mycorrhiza, uh, you have predictable patterns of recreation. You know, people are going to walk in the forest, they're going to bike in the forest, hunting, harvesting. The NGOs that were erected uh, in this uh, release phase to be less flexible to respond to other types of change. So all of these social and ecological parts fit, can be fit into the adaptive uh, cycle. And the problem is that in this conservation phase, the social and ecological uh, systems are typically most vulnerable. So that's when they, when they recreate their own vulnerabilities. But at the same time, it's also the phase in which they spend most of their time. And if we are going to manage in the wrong way, we, are made, we may face catastrophic events. So for example, and again the fire example, if you always uh, extinguish small surface fires, which are there, which actually sustain the ecosystem, you will end up sooner or later with a kind of fire that destroys uh, everything. You can give the same examples for inundation, flood control, you can give the same examples for uh, small versus large insect uh, outbreaks. And then another thing is that this adaptive cycle isn't alone. You know, if, you, if I look, for example, uh, at Matan, we talk about Matan uh, very often in this uh, conference, there is one adaptive cycle which is typical of a certain age forest patch, but the adjacent forest patch is another serial stage, so may, may be much older or much younger. And these adaptive cycles, they are connected. So for example, if you uh, have something that happens in uh, an old uh, or in a young forest patch, for example, suppose there's a fire or suppose there's an outbreak or something, uh, the adjacent patches may help that Patch that has been affected to be restored. So it remembers, actually, as a remember, uh, I don't remembers uh, things because of the adjacent uh, patches. Inversely, it can also revolve, and if you have a fire in one patch, it spreads to an older patch that's the revolt. So these different adaptive cycles are like stacks, one behind the other, and they are related. And that is what is called panarchy, this relationship. Uh, now, we uh, have been working in, in mangroves for uh, 25 uh, years and uh, a large part of what we, uh, what we have done is actually social ecological. And we've used uh, a suite of, uh, of methods from focus group, Q methodology, Delphi's and so forth, uh, trying to understand traditional knowledge of people, lifestyles, change, perception of change, also to relate it to remote sensing imagery, for example, the people that have seen and witnessed the changes, so why not ask them? They can actually inform also what has, uh, what has changed. We have fit that to conceptual frameworks, and it's all based uh, on about yeah, this 20 minute parity, uh, and uh, years and 20 uh, different uh, countries. And the information we um, collected in each country is not exactly the same type of methodology, the information that we have. Um, is pretty much the same. But we have never tried to fit it in the adaptive cycle. That is the first, the first time that we are actually trying to do that. And as I will later, I will open the call for collaboration because as I just saw for, for Sri Lanka, um, I'm sure there is other people in this room that, that see how their data can fit into this adaptive cycle. And I would, I would all invite you to, to, to come together, to put everything together and to write one paper about so these are countries where we have been uh, working, we have seen the flags, read the names. Now uh, let's let me immediately jump to examples. For example, in uh, Sri Lanka, <laughs> uh, it's one of our, our core sites, and, and let me just say uh, one word about the, the tsunami, I already mentioned the norm earlier this week. Um, what we see is a rapid colonization in tsunami affected area by mangrove associates or even terrestrial plants during this alpha phase. So during the reorganization phase, you suddenly have acrostinum arena. Now we can debate on whether acrostinum arena is a real mangrove or a true mangrove or an untrue mangrove or whatever. But the thing is, it's not a woody mangrove. If you look at uh, functional um, coastal protection function, for example, Acrostitum is not going to serve the same purpose as a rhizophora with uh, proper roots uh, or some with, with, with uh, peg roots. 
And so we see that there is yeah, some unintentional transformation after the tsunami from uh, mangrove forest that is mainly composed of really functional, at least in the, in the context of uh, coastal protection, functional species into maybe less functional uh, species. Other example, Malaysia. This is still an ecological uh, example. We have a century long silvicultural uh, management. And that is also uh, prone to transformation, but this time it's not uh, unintentional, it is intentional. We could actually decide, or the forest department could actually decide to earn, uh, to uh, thin earlier or later, uh, for, for that matter, in the R phase. So once uh, it starts yeah, like becoming really a solid forest, and they have to decide to thin, usually that's what you think. Usually it's around 10 and uh, uh, no, 15 and 20 uh, years. They might, they might decide to do that earlier. Uh, the, the group of, of Uta Berger already in 2011 released a paper indicating that uh, maybe it's better to thin earlier, 9 years to 14 years. We found the same thing uh, a couple of years later, uh, not based on modeling but based on field work. So that could lead to an intentional transformation. But then you are in charge and you can actually control. Uh, the system as far as you can. Then in the R and uh, K uh, phases, this is an example uh, uh, of hierarchy, there also you could have a quicker um, turn from release to conservation because of this memory of adjacent uh, batches. That's what I actually uh, explained using the fire example, but here it is a silvicultural uh, example. A social ecological example from Kenya. So the accumulating capital of uh, mangrove forest plantations, and that's especially accumulating in this exploitation phase and in the conservation phase, so it has been um, that capitalizing, this natural capital uh, especially, uh, during de decades uh, in some cases, years to, to, to decades. We can actually, it's not only about the ecology, uh, ecological part, we can actually manage this forests better by also including the know-how and the skills of the local people. Yeah. We, uh, I really appreciate the, the call from the social uh, scientists to, to involve more social scientists to understand uh, how the ecosystem uh, is, uh, is evolving. <coughs> and then political uh, example, participatory bottom-up uh, mangrove management that leads to new initiatives is again in the same R and uh, K phases. So rather than only have your plantation do something else with it. So we have uh, uh, quite a lot about it. Nico uh, Pamonia, which means mangroves together uh, in, in Swahili, uh, is, is there because it offers more than just a plantation to the community. And it's, uh, by, as far as we know, it is the only uh, certified, uh, I don't know how much, uh, but certified mangrove forest uh, in the world. It can maybe serve as an example to the initiatives uh, that have been uh, proposed for, uh, for Mexico and uh, for, the, for the other country as well. And then the last example, also uh, political, and the existence of decentralized bottom up uh, initiatives, which are uh, combined with the openness of politicians to such initiatives and that can lead to very yeah, different discourses actually may also lead to functional silo. It means a, a very big fragmentation of who is responsible for a certain area. People don't know anymore who is responsible for A or B. I have another example from Sri Lanka, for example, also. Yeah, you have the forestry department, you have the irrigation department, the forestry department is responsible for forests, the irrigation department is responsible for everything within 300 meters of a river or a creek. Well, guess where mangroves are growing? <laughs> exactly there, but both these political departments have uh, authority, that leads uh, to, to the conflicts. So as I said, this is more like a call to, to collaborate on trying to fit our data to uh, the adaptive cycle. And again, I emphasize we want to be very inclusive uh, on this. I just want to say, say one more thing, because so far you have actually seen the adaptive cycle from this side. So you have the connectedness and you have the capacity or, or the states of the ecosystem. But you can also add a resilience factor to, to 
the third uh, dimension, which is here, so increasing resilience, increasing connectedness, and increasing uh, capacity. And you can this, this cube in which you have this type of bits, you can actually turn it uh, in all, in, in, in all uh, directions. So, uh, the, let, let me actually apply this adaptive cycle, and the funny thing is with the adaptive cycle. <laughs> Uh, let me apply that to. Uh, I'll try to, uh, to find actually the logo of MN1 and you can see if I'm not trying to look for it. We, we failed, we didn't find it uh, anymore. So there is a recycle for MN, MN2, you have to release it. And they said once you have three, I think it's two times, I think it was even said that once you have three or something, then you really have it started, right? So there's the third one, it was in Sri Lanka, the fourth one in Florida, the fifth one is here, the sixth one, no clue, maybe I guess we will do it uh, very soon, the seventh one on this side, the eighth one on this side, the ninth one on this side, the tenth one, maybe we have a candidate, uh, actually. Uh, I don't mind uh, organizing again. <laughs> I don't have to tell my if I'm still alive by the time. <laughs> Okay, so remember the cube? I need some help here. Can I have some help? Uh, Ibrahim, can you come and help me? Um, remember the cube? I'm going to try and show you now the adaptive cycle in a uh, scene from, wait, I don't think, uh, from, from the bottom. So from the bottom of that three dimensional thing, so I'm going to look from the bottom. And what you actually see is not an eight, uh, but you actually going to see a circle. And I want to give you a special experience. So I'm going to use loops and I'm going to use musical loops to make you experience the yeah.
So then.
Thank <laughs> you.